My name is Mark Hansen. Uh, my wife, Kate, and myself moved into this house about eight months ago. We have the geothermal uh, with 14 100 foot deep wells out in our backyard. We have a uh, GCT 024, which is a combo unit. It does radiant in floor, um, hot water heating, along with forced air heating and air conditioning. Uh, we're doing 100% of the domestic hot water with a high temperature unit. Uh, that was a early design, uh, decision in the design phase because in addition to the capability of powering it with electricity, we power it at an incredibly high efficiency level. You can't match the efficiency of the geothermal heat pump and it's quiet. You don't hear air piping through vents at three in the morning because there isn't piping through vents. It's heated up. The floor, the floor just radiates that heat up. All right, and so big thanks to our sponsor, GeoComfort. And real exciting, this project here that was featured just recently became um, a fully uh, zero energy life project um, utilizing the GeoComfort system, using an all-electric home, uh, getting it Green Star Gold certified, LEED Platinum certified, um, and uh, you can check that out over at netzerominnesota.com. Uh, these folks are producing more energy uh, than, uh, than they use, uh, even while not using a drop of gas. So very exciting stuff there. Go and check that out. Go learn more about the GeoComfort system. All right, so using the Green Star tool to rebuild better, and market your sustainable business. Uh, this course is approved for one hour in continuing education units, AIBD, NARI Green, Certified Green Professional, Certified Green Home Professional, uh, GVCI, and it is also approved um, for AIA, uh, Health, Welfare, and Safety, HSW. Uh, today, I will not only be your moderator, but I will be your presenter. Uh, my name is Brett Little. I'm the executive director here at the Green Home Institute. Uh, the Green Home Institute is a nonprofit with a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. Um, this course here today, we're going to go over how to use the Green Star tool to make informed decisions, uh, more informed decisions during green building and remodeling. All right, so welcome. Um, so the very first thing we want to jump into is how to access the Green Star um, checklist. So um, it's not required to do that during this session by any means, um, but uh, you may have uh, you may have had the ability to uh, uh, to already access this prior to the session. Um, if you if you haven't, uh, don't worry. Um, you can for those of you listening on demand, you can pause it. And go access it if you want, um, or we can keep rolling forward with uh, um, with this navigation. But uh, this is the link right here. Um, so you want to take that link, and you definitely want to bookmark it. Um, we're always going to have it uh, right there. And then also we have, let's see here. Um, if you if you ever lose that link for whatever reason, I understand. Um, you can always go to our website, and there's several different ways you can find it. So this is our website right here, greenhomeinstitute.org. Um, you can head over to the Green Star Certification tab, and then from there, you will see Access the Green Star Checklist and Manual. Um, and this is where, if, you, if, you, um, if you've never logged into Green Star before, here's where you can just quick fill out this form uh, right here, and then... Uh, give us about one to three days. Um, we got to get you in the back end, but we'll get you access from there. If you already have the workbook, you can access it right here by clicking access the workbook, or you'll see um, it's not showing up right now, but there's some tabs on the right side of most of the pages on our website, and they also say access the checklist here. So go to our website, bookmark that link. Um, if you have any issues, though, uh, you know, please, uh, please let us know. Okay, so once you uh, once you get in, this is kind of the the, the page um, you're going to see, and and actually before um, before I get to that real quick, um, here we go. You're going to see this is the login screen 
uh, right here. And it's going to say it's powered by Earth Advantage. So Earth Advantage um, is one of our partners out of the Pacific Northwest. So you'll see this logo up there. Don't worry, you're in the right place. Uh, we just sort of use um, their software to program our program. So um, you know that they've got some of their stuff all over it, but uh, but it is our program. It is the Green Star program. So you are in the right place um, for now. Um, but anyway, you enter in your username, um, which is typically either your first name, last initial, or first name, last name, uh, unless you've changed it. And then enter in your password, which is uh, if you're just starting out with us, it's just all lowercase green star and the number one. Um, if at any time you forget your password, make sure you hit forgot password. If at any time you forgot your username, um, unfortunately you'll have to contact us at this point and we'll get that reset for you. So we appreciate your patience um, uh, on, on, on doing that. So again, uh, let's head back over to the tool. And so um, when you come in, this is what you're going to see. And, uh, and you're going to want to go over, if you want to click the Forms button, you can go ahead and click that button. And what you're going to see is uh, this pop up here. There are three different forms. At this point in time, we haven't fixed the prerequisite one, so please just ignore that. Um, basically, what you got here is your measures overview and your measures guide. And this is it. This is the full. Um, manual in the measures guide here. There is no other manual. Uh, there's nothing you have to pay for. There's nothing, um, no other details online like some other programs. Um, everything's in here. So if you click the overview, you will see, where are we at here? Um, you will see this uh, uh, page pop up with a bunch of details about the program, um, how to score points, um, some details on energy performance, some of the materials details. Um, but then if you scroll down, you will see every single credit and you'll just see basically the summarization of every single credit. Um, if you see these little logos here, that means they're prerequisites. And then if you see um, uh, points, that means there's points and that's sometimes associated with different uh, with different choices. So this is sort of just the summary of everything. It doesn't give you all the details. Um, but if you click on the um, overview measures guide here, that will give you the full full manual. Um, again, with all of the details, um, links to further resources. Um, if you're looking for further education on a detail, any kind of exceptions that might be involved, any kind of benefits. This is our full manual right here. And so the manual will always um, state on it uh, what, what current version the manual's in. So, um, and, and you can always, we'll add you to our Facebook group, we'll add you to our newsletter. And so anytime we make updates to the manual, there'll always be minor updates, just you know, rewording things and making small changes like resource links. Um, but you'll have access to that new manual. And anytime you go again to the um, forms page here, uh, that will always pull the latest and greatest uh, manual with, you know, with the most up-to-date details on it. Um, but that's completely free for you to, um, to have access to. So. Okay, so one other thing I want to show you is that once you start doing more projects, um, you will see then sort of start compiling up on your um, on your um, 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 portal here. So you'll just see them all uh, start popping up. You can see this is a lot of testing stuff we've been doing, um, but you will see all of your projects here. Um, if there are projects you're no longer working on, we do encourage you to clean up your de your portal here so it doesn't get overwhelming. You can delete it. And then, of course, you can view your projects, see what you can even see what status they're in, if they're ones that you've created, if they're ones that you've submitted, or they're ones that have been reviewed or certified. Um, this is actually Earth Advantage kind of stuff, so we don't use any of that. You can ignore all that. These are just the three um, sessions you would be using. And then, yeah, here you can see whether they're certified, uh, active, certified, or something you've, you've deactivated um, for your projects. So if you go ahead and then if you're following along or not, just um, um, if you're not following along, that's fine. But here's the details. Uh, go ahead and click on the the new the new project button. 
Okay, so once you click the new project button, here you are, you get into this section here. And um, for the time being, at some point, your Green Star Raiders will uh, accrue right here. But in the meantime, um, that, uh, that is not the case. So you can either uh, click Admin Green Star or click my name here. Doesn't matter either way, it won't make any difference. Um, and then here, if you're building out a major subdivision, uh, this is kind of set up so you can figure out you know, which subdivision it is and then which lot it is. Um, if you're not doing anything like that, unfortunately the, it's locked as something you have to fill out. So just put in the address of the project um, twice and then put it in down here. It'll ask you if you want to add a new subdivision um, some of the time when you're doing this and then just click yes on that and then put the city, state, the zip. Um, this you can actually completely bypass um, for now uh, on your first project if you're not sure or you can um, you can put the information in there um, and, and move forward. So at that point, that's pretty straightforward. That's all the information that is needed to get you up and moving. And then you can just go ahead and, and click Save. Let's see if there's any questions here. Okay, so heading back to the uh, presentation. All right, so project types, they really matter because they, they, um, they make a difference on um, what kind of credits you can pursue and also what, uh, uh, what kind of prerequisites you have. Um, so right now in our program, you'll see, you kind of see everything. So you'll just have to note where it says, you know, renovation only, new construction only, uh, commercial, multifamily only, um, and just kind of have to notate that. In the future, we'll have it sort all out so you won't see all that stuff. But in the meantime, try to ignore the things that you don't need to be involved in. Um, and we'll also point you in the right direction as you're going. So anyway, there's a lot of differences. So uh, the program is primarily meant to help really serve renovations. Um, there's millions of existing homes that are, you know, poisoning their occupants. They're sending money out of the local economy. They're hemorrhaging energy. Um, and so we want to help fix those homes and make improvements to those, those buildings and those homes. So uh, this is a renovation program at, the, at its core, um, which we're really excited about um, because there's not many green building programs that focus on renovations. It's very difficult. So there are requirements and things you can do different um, and ways you can score energy points different for renovations. If you're doing an addition, um, for the most part, you're actually going to be complying with the new construction um, protocol just for the addition. Now, there are exemptions. Um, so for example, in new construction, you're wanting to ensure um, you've got enough grading away from the house. Now, that's easy to do in new construction, not so easy to do in renovation. Um, so in additions, if you know, the grading just simply makes absolute no sense because it could be grading back into the existing portion of the house, um, those are exemptions there. But for the most part, you're gonna be following a lot of the thermal envelope requirements uh, and new HVAC requirements um, when you're adding an addition. Uh, then new construction, again, has its own set of prerequisites um, following the IECC 2015 uh, and or ASHRAE 2013 code on commercial and new construction um, multifamily mixed use. So. Um, and then, of course, what is the project type? Is it single family? Those have some different prerequisites and credits. Multifamily low rise, multifamily mid to high rise. And um, we've been asked quite a bit to um, allow people who have commercial buildings to take advantage of our program and see how it works. Um, so we do have uh, the ability for you to score commercial building in it. Uh, I will say there are some uh, ventilation requirements that are more geared towards, or more healthy living requirements that are more geared towards homes. Um, for uh, for uh, you know for for residential use um, to keep you know kids healthy whatever so those kinds of things you know we can take a look at for commercial buildings if they don't make sense but um, you know mostly those are there's a built out in there but there's a lot of other things you can you can do to help score out a uh, a commercial building and, and communicate how uh, you know ultimately how green it is so all right so let's go into 
um, sort of the meat and bones of the uh, of the Green Star tool here. All right, so once you uh, once you create a project, um, you're actually going to first see uh, this page here. Um, so what are you looking at here? Um, you are looking at the um, project details. So if you need to go in and change those details, uh, you are looking at here the ability to upload documents, um, which again are sort of Earth Advantage focused. Um, none of this matters. Whatever you select here when you're uploading documents, um, you know, just basically you could probably just always select other and then type a description plans, uh, receipts, whatever. It doesn't matter what you select here. That just helps um, uh, helps uh, identify what it is. Um, but in your case, you can select whatever there. Um, over here, you've got um, some details about what the, what the, uh, what the points are. Um, and so you can see your energy, health, land, or what we call place, um, materials, and water. You can see what your minimum required to certify is, uh, which is 60. And you can see what your proposed credits are that you've selected maybe on your yes credits, your credits that have been verified. And then once these are checked off green down here, that means you have achieved uh, that pillar. Um, and so you can actually uh, submit a project for just pillar certification um, if you just want to focus on energy, health, materials, or one of the five um, as well, which is another option in the program. So once you score enough points in each one to hit the baseline, these will all these will all turn green. Um, and then down here, you'll see uh, if any kinds of inspections and inspection notes have been completed by the rater, those will populate there. And then if the project has been certified, you'll see your notice down here. Um, so really, to get into the project, um, you want to, this is really the edit button right here. Um, It'd be nice if it said something like access the workbook here, um, but in the meantime, um, it's just this edit button that's going to get you into the meat and bones of the checklist. All right, so once you get in, you're going to see a couple different things. Um, you're going to see the ability to filter the workbook. Um, so you can filter it based on um, things you've selected no for, things you've selected yes for, uh, maybe for, no, and or not applicable. Those are the same. And you can filter it for one or more of those. Um, again, also, if you are, let's say you've gone through the program and, gee, you're just shy some material or water points and you just need to, like, focus on what those are and find a few more, um, then that's as simple as, you know, clicking that and then it filters out um, the other credits so you're not bothered by those. Um, or, you know, let's just say you, um, you know, want to focus purely on an energy pillar certification. Well, then again, you can just kind of scrub everything else and you can, um, you know, focus on, uh, on, on those right there. Um, so, uh, and then of course you can, you can turn off prerequisites. Uh, maybe you've went through and you've already figured out what they all are. Um, and so you can hide them. So again, they're not, um, you know, they're not complicating the thing. So um, the way that the program works is that you've got each of these sections and um, you may or may not be using all of these sections. Um, so for example, if you're doing a renovation, you know, you might uh, not decide to do anything to the landscape. Uh, so you'll probably just want to ignore that section at first. Now, eventually, you might say, well, we've got a lot of landscape features that are sustainable, um, so let's go back through and review what's already there. That's fine, um, because the way that this program works is you're, in an existing home especially, is you're taking stock of um, what's going on in that house and, you, and, and that building, and you get rewarded if they meet certain sustainable criteria. So let's say you go to work with a client, you go to renovate their house, and you look out and you see, gee, they've got um, rain gardens and they've got a bunch of permeable paver. Well, they get rewarded for that, um, potentially. So you might, you know, ignore the site and landscape 
and then go, okay, let's look at this and see if we can pick you up some more points or, hey, maybe you want to um, expand that rain garden or maybe you want to put in some more drought tolerant or add a food garden, you know, to get some more points here to and to increase how sustainable your home is. So, you know, that's one way to look at it. So, uh, you know, that's how people use that. Um, so that's really the, the most, the best example of where you may or may not be, um, um, you know, getting involved in that. And then right now, since we just recently upgraded to version two, we still have some folks who are on version one. And so you might see within here a few like do not use version one. Eventually that'll all get cleaned out here soon. Um, so for those of you who haven't done any projects um, or aren't in the middle of any, just ignore this down here and that will be cleaned out um, in the meantime. So the way this works is you um, you open these up and uh, you know that's where you uh, get to see basically you know all of your credits, uh, all of your points, um, you know, uh, you name it. Everything in the uh, in the program is uh, is going to be seen right in here, and there's no other credits or any other details, um, you know, listed anywhere else. So one of the things to know is that um, as you're going through this. Um, you're mostly going to be focusing on your yes credits. So as you're selecting yes, you are, um, you know, you're, it's turning green for you. Um, and then you also, if you see a drop down over here, then there's choices within that choice. So in this case, um, and we're going to get into the prerequisites soon, but this is one of the, uh, the prerequisites. So again, you're saying, yep, this is the type of project uh, we are doing. And again, you're going to go through this workbook and you're going to see this drop down choice list um, for many, many different things. Um, and uh, there's also the maybe option. So again, as you're going through, you might say, you know, you know, anything you select as yes is something you're really 100% sure of. Anything you're not 100% sure of, you're going to be selecting it as maybe. And so that just helps you kind of identify what are the things you might need later, come back to. Um, you name it. Now, I do want to caution everybody and, and say this is we've had a lot of teams think they have to go through and select not applicable or no on every single credit they're not taking. Please don't do that. That is a huge waste of your time. Um, and, and I can understand that it might be you might think you need to do that. Um, but please don't you don't need to do that. That um, this no button is here for a couple different reasons. Um, just so you know, everything is already pre-selected no, so you're already you're already good. Um, but if you had selected something as yes or maybe, and then all of a sudden it's no, well, that's how you you know go through and deactivate it. Um, the other time where no uh, might be applicable um, is uh, you know if it's something that's a requirement but doesn't make specific sense for your project. So again. Um, you know, a lead paint test. Well, let's say you're remodeling a home from 1990. You're not going to do a lead paint test. So you're simply going to go and you're going to select no on it. And then you're going to head over to these notes here. Um, and you're going to type, um, you know, 1990 built home or something. Just real brief. Just something that just says, this is not applicable to me. Um, and, and use that not applicable with caution because that doesn't give you the leeway to go through and just select no on every prerequisite you don't agree with. Um, but if it's something that's just simply not relevant to your project for some reason or another, this is a great place to explain to the reviewer, hey, um, you know, this, is, uh, this isn't something that has any relevancy. So now on the notes, this is um, a great place here for several different things. Um, these are notes you can write to yourself, questions to yourself. These are notes you can write to the team, someone else who might access the workbook or the downloaded um, um, a PDF that it generates. Um, these are notes that you might give to somebody who's bidding on the project to give a little more details or for specifications. Um, these are also notes that can be used for certification um, with the reviewer and the rater. So you can write notes to them saying, you know, on this credit, this is what we did, and here's how we did it. Um, the other neat uh, way that uh, another benefit to these these notes, if you will, is that if you are the rater or you're the, the project team leader or board, whoever's controlling the project, um, you um, you can take links 
if so if you're doing online like using an online file management system like Dropbox for say for example um, most of those file management systems uh, can generate a link to certain documents um, so if you're using that which is fine we don't make you use anything you know that uploader I showed you earlier you can use that or not use it. we don't care um, whatever's easier for you we want you to use so you know what you can do is you can invite the reviewer and or the rater into your project um, documentation management tool and one thing that's easy is you can uh, generate a link for each specific set of documentation that you're generating and you can just pop it right into the notes whichever is relevant to that specific credit um, and then that way the reviewer can just you know use that link and go straight to it and that helps keep everybody organized um, that's not required either but that's just one um, easy way to uh, to utilize this tool um, so again you know here's all of the all of the different sections I will say uh, down here in section 10 is designed for reduced electrical and magnetic fields this section is actually going to be broken up and distributed across the checklist um, but Green Star was um, one of the first and still one of the rarest programs to use um, uh, strategies to reduce EMFs if you've got clients who um, have sensitivity or or just prefer to um, you know improve their sleep patterns and other things so there's a lot of strategies in here and in fact this is getting a whole new makeover and upgrade very shortly as well in regards to um, you know bringing it up to 2017 um, recommendations and requirements for um, reducing EMF so um, that's probably going to see that uh, um, disappear here as well so let's get in I mean that's so that's basically how you navigate this thing if you have any further questions uh, let us know as I mentioned um, anytime you see these check boxes that is a sign that that is required it's a prerequisite and then anytime you see um, credits get this out of the way anytime you see credits um, as you'll see if I start checking these credits off um, you know you'll start seeing them accrue here so anytime you see points in there that means you get a point in each of the five pillars um, of green energy health land uh, materials and water um, and so most of the time you won't see points in each of them um, but as you start selecting points you'll see it starts adding up in this box um, that just starts to follow you around and again once you hit these thresholds you'll get a green checkbox here just showing you um, that you've achieved that uh, that pillar um, and then once they're all green you've achieved um, you know basic uh, uh, bronze level certification um, oh another thing while you're navigating too is you can quick boom you know you start going through it's kind of like tabs on your computer right you're on your computer if you're like me I've got 50 different windows and 70 different tabs open right now um, so you know same thing you start getting through this and it's just it's just all messy and you can't figure out where you are so you can just shrink it right down um, and then one other thing that's really cool is if you're looking for something really specific like you're like I know I can get points for this but I can't find it um, click the maximize all button and this is real easy you can say you know you know where is the uh, and you can hit control F um, which I know control F works a lot better on Chrome uh, but anyway um, you know control F and then you can type in uh, like uh, find LED and uh, well and that didn't work out so well but uh, if you're using control F on something that works better than Mozilla or I don't know how to navigate Mozilla that well it'll it'll just boom it'll find it um, for you it'll find that word you know for you wherever those words are so I highly recommend the uh, control F or whatever they do on Macs and other platforms the find button um, very useful especially if you know how to use it within the <laughs> within the web uh, program that you're using um, I do not know how to use it here on Mozilla I don't use that too often so um, anyway prerequisites are again let's take a look at some of the different prerequisites uh, again you're going to be selecting your project you're going to be selecting your climate zone which um, you know you're just going to be dropping that in the notes um, oh and let me back up here real quick the question marks you're probably asking what are the question mark boxes well um, these boxes right here are everything you need to know about that credit I mean everything so again 
Um, unlike other rating systems, other programs, um, you, you might get to go purchase a manual or go purchase an addendum to the manual or go look online on 10 other links to find out other details. We have everything um, updated right in here uh, so that when you click that little blue question box, uh, you are going to see you know, exactly what it is you need to do, um, what the benefit of doing it is, um, what the you know, rationale for that is. Um, this is actually a very long one. Uh, and then how it needs to be verified. Um, and then there might also be um, exceptions on how to achieve this. So you'll kind of see at the top, you'll see what's required, um, but then sometimes you know, there are exemptions or, uh, or exceptions. And so this is it. This is actually pulls right out of the manual. Um, and this is where all the details are. Now, anytime you see links, these are for um, you know, you so these things don't get too wordy and they give you further resources to go explore and do research. You might see links to other entities that we reference quite a bit. You might see links to our own internal work. You might see links to some webinars that we've done before in the past. Um, but these are all extra resources, so you can learn more about you know, how and why you would want to, um, to do that. So definitely um, you know, use those check boxes so you can understand better. So anyway, um, requirements uh, don't build in a flood zone. Um, or if you are in a flood zone, you know, make improvements so you're not affected by flooding. Um, very important these days, you know, 500 year, 1000 year floodplains, they're not following the federal guidelines for whatever reason, they're jumping their banks and they're uh, wreaking havoc. So I mean, we even may upgrade here shortly to requiring you can't build in the 100 year floodplain. It's, um, you know, we're looking into that because that is uh, uh, certainly a, a, a big issue. So. Um, if you are using imported wood, um, it's got to be Forest Stewardship Council certified or FS SFI. So you're making sure you're not um, ruining the forest. Um, you know, between unit tightness and single family attached homes, um, very important. Uh, so single family attached or multifamily. Sealing all the ducts during construction to prevent contamination. Don't want to ruin those. And then um, meeting the uh, IECC 2015 code um, or equivalency, you can hit a HERS 60. Um, so you're either meeting all the pres prescriptive requirements of 20, uh, 2015 IECC, both residential and commercial, or you can hit a HERS index of 60, uh, verified HERS index, or ASHRAE 90.1 um, 2013 for commercial or um, mid to high rise multifamily. So those are all required. If you're doing remodeling, we want to see um, inspections for gas leaks being done. We want to see um, radon testing uh, being done and mitigated if there's a problem before you get started on the work. Uh, water leak testing, uh, you know, water leaks are easy, easy ways to prevent water waste, dollar waste, and quite frankly, damage to the home. So test that water. Um, Pre-1978, we'll need a lead paint test inspection remediation formed and then if there is asbestos found at all um, that needs to be um, removed or encapsulated and, and you definitely don't want your radar doing a blower door test um, if there is asbestos in there so those are the prerequisites those are pretty straightforward now there are prerequisites in each of the other sections as well so for example on renovations you have to do a um, a moisture risk assessment um, and um, if you're going to finish the basement you've got to do the moisture risk assessment and then seal the basement off um, before such time and then also if you are and this is for new construction as well all new renovated basements or new construction of homes all must have radon mitigation uh, systems very cheap pennies on the dollar um, no matter what zone you're in just because radon can shift and it's you know it's really easy to mitigate so and there are um, exemptions and ways that you can do some other kind of design strategies around that but those are requirements um, for the program um, uh, along with um, um, you know proper whole house ventilation um, pulling flex duct tight um, sealing all the ductwork, having uh, um, Sealed combustion for new gas appliances, carbon monoxide detectors, uh, programmable thermostats, Mervate filtration, um, don't putting air handling in the garage, 
doing the refrigerant tar charge tests. Um, believe it or not, refrigerant is the number one, um, you know, global warming potential issues out there. Um, and then uh, if you do have fireplaces, you know, properly ventilate the stove and then, um, or fireplace. And then you can see just for new systems, here are some other items that, um, you know, are just, are just for new construction um, applications. All right, and then uh, let's go back up through here on the design side. So when you're jumping into uh, design, Yeah, so when you're um when you're jumping into design um well let, let's take that back. So once you go through and and select all your credits, um you you're going to hit save and return to overview. And so I want to show you something. Um now here we're back on your master page when you log into the the workbook. Um you're going to go and you're going to either click selected measures overview or selected measures guide. And this is what selected measures overview is going to get you, wherever you may be. There we are. Um, so this is going to give you all of your yes points um, that you've selected and your prerequisites that you selected. And then it's going to give you all your proposed in yellow. So it's going to weed out anything you don't need to know about. And these are just the summaries. So these are just the basic information and how many credits they're worth on the right side. Um, you know, going all the way down. And then on the uh, guide, wherever you may be, the guide is going to give you that, but um, it's going to be the full uh, details. So again, anything you saw on that question mark box, you will see it here. Benefits, um, exceptions, uh, resources. Um, you will see links to link out for more information. Um, you will see uh, how to verify this credit if you're the rater or want to know how to verify it if you're self-submitting. Um, so it has everything there. And so, so one of the cool things you can do with both of these is you can take them, download them, um, and then you can use them. Uh, we highly recommend everybody use them uh, during the bidding process. So one of the biggest issues or complaints we hear about green building is that, um, you know, how do we get the requirements into the bidding process, uh, right? So, you know, how do we t communicate to people what they need to do? So this generates a, a bidding detail for you that you can download, convert to a Word doc or, you know, manipulate a PDF and then use it for your bidding documents um, to send out um, to get your cost back. And we'll tell every contractor, every subcontractor exactly what they need to do. Uh, and we've seen homeowners, you know, run the show and run their own project, you know, using this tool with that. Um, or if you're the raider, you as the raider can use this to, um, again, ensure that the contractors are knowing exactly what, what they need to be doing. Um, and then, of course, you can use this for contract language. Um, so let's say you, you know, you've got your project team together, but you, you need them to obviously sign the contract on exactly everything they need to do. And so, again, same complaint. You know, how do we find the green features to add them into the contract without having to recreate the wheel or create our own information? So, again, you can take this, add to it whatever you need to do, and you can put it into each sub's contract and say, you know, you have to do these things so that it gets green certified. Um, and then, boom, you know, all of the um, all of the information, all the specifications are there. Um, and then, lastly, you can use this for your um, specifications, notes in your plans and your drawings. Um, and then, if you are folks who like to use accountability form strategies, um, we used to require assigned accountability forms, but we don't anymore. Um, but if that's something you want to have, you can have these um, items, you know, hanging up at the project and then having the contractors sign off on them uh, when they complete it. So just for legal purposes, um, you might want to do that. These are just all different ways you can use it. Uh, at the end of the day, all we require is that you generate one final workbook um, and then we send you a document to sign. The project team leader or the rater signs it and then you take this um, handout and then you have to put it into the required um, the required homeowner's manual. All right, so in the design stage, um, after you've went through all your prerequisites, um, there's a couple different design strategies. There is the um, preliminary plan review and registration. 
Um, so this one is, especially if you're new to green building, especially, or if you're new to Green Star, um, or if you, um, so we don't require project registration at all. We just require a final certification once everything's done. Um, in fact, you may never even contact us until you're ready to submit for certification. That's fine. We don't, we don't need to hear from you. We don't, you know, we got a lot to do. We definitely want to help you though. So what you can do is you can get extra points if you do a preliminary plan review. So what you'll do is you'll get, you know, the checklist completed. You'll get some of your specifications, your site plans, elevations, you know, some of your initial reports, your initial energy modeling done. Um, and uh, then you'll go in and you'll actually make a copy of the project. So, um, and I'll, we'll show you how to do a clone later. Um, but that's just because once you clone, once you, um, once you submit your project for final, it locks it all up. So, um, and then you can't get back into it. So you'll, you'll make a copy and then you'll hit submit for final. Um, and then from there, you have to go and register your project. Once you register it and pay the small fee, um, you get a registration access ID. And then within two weeks, we do the preliminary plan review. And again, just we just make sure you're on track um, for certification and you're not missing anything. Because quite frankly, um, if you've not done this before, you don't have any experience or you just are doing something new, uh, the last thing you want to do is having to go back and figure out what went wrong during the final certification process if something is missing. So we have this there as an option. It's an extra point in each of the five pillars. And um, also, if you are um, working with an affordable housing agency or working with a grant or working with a homeowner who wants, who needs them for you to show them progress or you're trying to get a green mortgage, a lot of these institutions are going to require that you show them some progress. So this is another way to get your registration. And we only hand out registration IDs if you actually show us that you are, um, you know, you are, you are making good headway and that it looks like you're on track based on your initial plans and elevations and, and specifications. So this is a tool for you to use um, and, and, and again, may be required by whatever um, a designation or entity that um, you know, might want to use it. Um, certified green home professional. So let's head back here. Um, so we used to require um, qualification, um, but, uh, and we're going to skip the badges for now, but um, yeah, we used to require uh, qualification, but um, where are we at here? Oh, I apologize. We have that, uh, we have that as a, uh, here it is. Um, we used to require Green Star qualification. We no longer do that. But if you want to become a certified Green Home associate and then professional, there's um, extra points in the rating system for doing that. And so this is just a program where, you know, you come in and um, you, uh, you're either BPI or ResNet or some other energy related credential or you take this online training that we have that actually takes you into the house and shows you how to weatherize it, and make it energy efficient. It's all done like on your own time. Um, and then you complete 11 hours of um, mandatory training. Um, and I'm going to refresh this page here because that's a little out of date. Um, you're going to actually complete 12 hours of, of mandatory training, one of them actually being this class, so you're already on your way, uh, of some webinars we've made up and then some electives. Um, so if you are attending our weekly Wednesday webinar series, you can use one of those as your electives. And then we have everybody read, um, read the Green Building Practices and Principles book and then submit a one page summary. And then that's it. Um, you go through that, you become a green, a so, a green home um, associate. And then once you complete a real certified project, just one project that you're involved in, you just have to have some sort of involvement on the project. Um, you become a certified green home professional um, and then a master after you complete 10 and can get more points in the system. Again, all just, um, all just optional stuff. Um, and then uh, we've got create your multiplicity, uh, you're kind of you're doing your design team charrette uh, is what they call it in some of their programs. Um, that's all optional. If you contract with a Green Star Raider before and have them come and do sort of a home inspection, um, we're actually going to even have points in here to, if you get a formal home inspection done, 
Uh, and then we are going to be training green home inspectors. So they're doing the formal green, the inspection while they're looking at the green features of the house and sort of assessing what's in the house and then giving you some options on how to move forward. And then also, if you hire a HQUIDO or Nate certified HVAC contractor, um, there are some extra credits there. Um, that is a requirement for Energy Star. But um, on energy, we've got a, several different um, pathways for energy um, to take. If you're doing a um, home renovation, you can use the Department of Energy Home Energy Score and score a five through ten to pick up a majority of your energy points. Um, so this is the simplest way to score points. And we actually can do those scores for you. Um, so if there is no local DOE home energy score uh, assessor in your area, and they're growing across the country, um, we can even help them get trained. If you have a rater that you work with, a BPI or a HERS rater you work with that you like. Um, otherwise, it's something we can do. And so there is a fee to it, but that fee goes to apply to your final certification costs. Um, so you just submit your plans to us during the preliminary rating. We score out the home, give you some recommendations on how to approve it, and then we go from there. And then um, you know you send us proof you've completed what you've done, and then we can rescore the house, and we can do it all under the draft version. But obviously, we really recommend connecting with a Green Star Rater who also does this. Um, then you can also get points uh, for the for the HERS index rating. And so for the HERS index rating, you are um, you're basically going to be um, uh, you're going to be saying uh, what level of uh, certification or what level of HERS you are achieving, and then entering that in there, and then it will pop up your um, specific number of points. Um, the other thing we're doing is um, well, let's jump ahead here for for commercial and multifamily. You can use the Department of Energy's Building Energy Score which is similar to this. It's a one through 10 rating system. Um, you can use uh, our zero energy capable designation, um, which is also a badge in the program. So if you can get close to zero, you can pick up most of the points. And if you actually hit zero, um, you effectively then um, pick up uh, a majority of all the energy points and are an instant platinum level certification. Um, and then you can get uh, uh, points for having a certified uh, building um, in the energy rating programs. Um, and then there's also um, ASHRAE 90.1 2013 for those of you who are doing new construction, multifamily mid-rise, major gut rehabs, or commercial. And again, same thing as the HERS index rating. There are uh, a number of, uh, uh, and this is not required, we just got to fix that there. Um, there are a number of points that you can pick up um, in the energy section, depending on how better you are than the ASHRAE um, 2013. So that's, there's kind of several different pathways you can take to energy. Um, the one that's the lowest one is that you can utilize um, any kind of energy modeling software, really. Um, I mean, we need to see what it is. We need to see that it's valid. And if you can show that your um, project is going to um, use 20,000 kilowatt hours, so if you're using any gas, you have to convert it over, um, 20,000 kilowatt hours or less, um, you can pick up a majority of points in the rating system as well. And for multifamily projects, um, that's on a per unit basis. So it would take a whole building average, or if you're just certifying individual units, um, we would just be looking at those units. So uh, that's another way to get points. It doesn't require any kind of necessarily any kind of energy ratings. It's purely based on um, your predicted uh, your predicted energy usage. All right. Oh, and then uh, one thing I forgot to. Uh, to show you is our, we do have the ability to do innovation credits. So um, if you have an idea that um, we haven't thought of, you can um, go in here and uh, you can see, where are we at here? You can propose um, an innovative idea. And so you simply would just go into the notes and you would explain what your idea is, which five key pillars, if more than one, 
it's relevant to how many points you think it's worth and then give us backup documentation supporting it so it's just and this could also be going above and beyond something we say so like let's just say example hyper local right like getting your materials from 100 miles we give you credits for but we know that if you can get it you know let's say you get all your trees um, to create the trim for the house from the yard. I mean, that's just hyper local. So there might be some, you know, you could propose some extra points for that there. And we may adopt it into the rating system and then give you a discount um, if you come up with something uh, cool on your uh, on your next project there. So um, okay. Um, so here is the Green Star process. Um, request access to the checklist. Um, create a project, roll through the workbook, entering in your maybe or your yes, um, obtain a Green Star Raider and or submit a preliminary plan review. So this is um, definitely optional. And so um, what's, what's, what are you doing here? So um, there's two different pathways. Um, there is using the third party Green Star Raider or just having doing self submission as a project team leader. Um, for the Raider, it's the most ideal pathway, we believe. It's going to be easier to do. You're just going to let them handle uh, most of the certification, verification, documentation work. They're just going to sign off on everything, visually verify, so there's less documentation. Uh, reduced certification fees. Um, they can actually, if they're one of our um, premier Raiders, can uh, do the preliminary plan for you, uh, which we would rather that happen. You don't have to talk to us then. Um, and they might be very knowledgeable about building science, not saying your project team leaders aren't, but, you know, a lot of raters and energy raters, is, is that's what they're doing. So, um, again, you can do self-submission. It's less ideal. Definitely very good to use if you're in a remote area, don't have any raters, don't have any affordable raters to work with. Um, you or some of your staff member are going to have to handle the certification documentation, so they need to get trained up. Um, we're going to require 100% um, documentation submittal uh, on the very first one that you do and then it might go down a little bit as you succeed at more projects without any errors but you need 100% of everything needs to be documented um, for raters well we'll get in get into the raters but um, uh, more expensive fees because it's just uh, more of our time reviewing documentation um, you got to keep up with the program and then um, you know submit a preliminary plan to GHI is, you know, one of the ways that can help make that easier. So for those of you who wonder about the rating raters, who are the Green Star Raiders? Um, these are folks who have some background knowledge in one of these major areas here. So this is just we require um, them have this sort of energy green background in one of these areas um, to, to become a Green Star Raider. Um, they're local to the feet on the street in the area, helping you out. Um, they can most, a lot of them can provide all of the testing and inspection that you may need, hopefully, um, rather than having to try to get multiple folks in. Um, you, you know, you might have a Green Star Raider and an Energy Raider, and that's fine, but they likely, ideally, are all the same person. Um, they must be third party, so they can't be working for you or anyone on your team. Um, there's no cost for them to become a Raider other than they have to maintain their credentials. Um, they're also going to be folks who are invited to help make program changes, corrections, uh, maybe even have a voting ability on new updates. And instead of 100%, we're only reviewing a 15% of their documentation um, to some degree, depending on failures or not. And um, you know, we may go in and reinspect the building either virtually or in person uh, once a year, um, you know, for those raters. Um, so back to the process, um, and number five is, again, you can skip number four entirely. Um, those are optional. Uh, begin the construction renovation process. Uh, if you do have energy raters doing pre-drywall through like the HERS index rating, for example, uh, um, they may want to attend that pre-drywall, otherwise they'll give you a poor rating. So we're not managing that, that's up to you guys. Um, finalize the construction and testing. Again, finalize landscape if you're pursuing landscape credit. Um, sign or initial the form um, for certification. And again, that could be from the rater. And again, during this time, you you or the rater are gathering the documentations, the photo, the receipt, and you're uploading it somewhere, backing it up. 
Um, so you have that. And then you're going to submit for review and at that time pay the certification fee and then you're either approved or there might be some correction or, or more, um, more information needed. So, so a lot of folks re reach out to us and say, you know, um, we've already done a project, but we probably can prove that we achieved all of the green building um, requirements. We have evidence of this. So can we back certify it? And the answer is yes, we can, as long as we can prove everything was done. And it might require a little more work, um, but it can be back certified. And this is the same example of taking stock of an existing home. So when you have an existing home, you're going in and figuring out where that home is already scoring at. I mean, just by its inherent nature, it might have a DOE home energy score of six. And so you're already picking up points um, by doing that. So that's kind of that same thing as you're doing a backwards review of where the home is at. Um, if you're doing new construction, um, you the home had to have been built, um, you know, before five years ago, whenever that date is, um, for it to get into the renovation program. Otherwise, it has to follow new construction, and obviously can be more difficult, um, you know, to do the uh, to do the back certification. Uh, for documentation, we've got specifications, plans, elevations, <laughs> drawings on the back of a napkin of your landscape plan. You see that all the time. Um, energy models, photos, receipts, calculations, um, and or if you're working with the rater, you may barely have any of this stuff and they're going to just sign everything off and you know be on with it. If you do register your project with us, we will give you access to a file share system called box.com and that's where you can go in and just start uploading documentation. I mean, just for your own own legal reasons and your own um, due diligence, it's probably in your best interest as the builder, whoever, you know, project manager, to be documenting all of this stuff before things get closed off or whatever. And so this is a great place to do that. We're going to be doing trainings on how to use the Box app on your phone or tablet to just upload stuff right from the field or from the office so it's not too burdensome. Um, but that's an option for you. And again, uh, the verification tab and the question mark, that's where you're going to go in and uh, and you're going to take a look and see if there's anything else that needs to be submitted. So even if the rater's signing off, um, there may be things that we still need to see no matter what that have to be uploaded. Um, that's pretty rare, but some credits, um, you know, do have those, uh, those different items there. So um, duplication. So this is where you, um, you, you may be a builder, architect, designer who is, or a rater who's working with a builder, architect, or a designer um, who is constantly using the same design um, most of the time. Um, and so, you know, why continue to, uh, you know, why continue to uh, recreate the wheel if, uh, if that's what you're doing? And so if that's the case, um, what you're going to do is head over to, uh, you're going to fill out the workbook and then you might say, you know what, I just filled out the workbook. This is sort of my stock project, right? I mean, this is the way I build, this is the way I design, and it's barely ever going to change, uh, or most of the time this is the way it is. So what you can do is um, you can kind of get your the perfect stock project built out, and then you can click clone. And then when you click clone, it just basically copies everything you just did. So if you just certified a home and you want to clone it, then clone it. Um, and so that way you you aren't going back through and changing anything. You're just, um, you know, maybe doing, if something is unique on this next project, but it's barely different, you just tweak it in the workbook. Um, but the reality is that just allows you to keep copying and, and, you know, doing the same thing. If you've got a big neighbor, if you've got a big neighborhood development or you've got a big multifamily building where you're doing sampling, please don't do this. Those you can all submit under one checklist. So if you've got, a, a, you know, a development with 60 homes or a building with 60 units, just submit one checklist, but it has to be the worst case scenario. So if you had 60 homes, but, you know, 10 of them were net zero homes and five of them were near zero homes and, you know, the rest were all like gold status and maybe some are bronze status. Well, in that case, you want to, you know, you want to create a checklist for each of those homes um, otherwise, you're going to use to use the worst case scenario. And it's going to drag everything down to the, the lowest common denominator. So otherwise, if you're someone who's just kind of doing a custom build and, 
you're doing the same thing all the time with a different address, um, you know, that's an easy way to just, um, you know, keep cloning that and, uh, and doing it that way. Um, and then we do have the ability for you to have us interpret credits if you have questions. So the best way to do that is to go into the notes section uh, as you're going through the workbook. In fact, as you're going through the workbook and you have questions, the very best thing you can do is not to email us or call us or call your rater, but to write your questions into those notes. Um, and then that way, either we and or your rater can log in on the back end and take a look at those questions and we can see exactly what credit it's specific to and then we can even put the answers right into the notes and it keeps it all organized per credit so you're not scrambling around to find different emails um, so uh, if you're working with us you what i recommend that you do is you go through and you get your list of questions and then you um you send us an email and and then um what we would really like you to do is to, to mention or somehow identify hey hey brett or whoever we're working with here, um, I put all the maybe points as questions. So take a look at those or, hey, go to these 10 credits. Here they are. These are the ones with questions. Otherwise, you know, we would see a million credits and, and not know which one to look at. So, um, you know, if you I think that's one of the best ways you are doing your first projects. Just drop those questions in and we can log in on the back end and, um, you know, see what uh, what there is. So so what are the costs? The tool is free to use at any time. No charge whatsoever. If you're going to use it for free um, and use it to help inform design, then great. You know, we love it. Uh, we want to help you um, do that. You can give, a, give us a donation if you want. If you're so inclined to, we appreciate it. Um, if you're doing the DOE Home Energy Score draft with us, um, that's $50, and that goes towards the final certification fee. That's optional, and again, we'd rather you work with a local rater. If you're doing the registration preliminary plan review with us, um, that's $100 um, to do that. Again, that's optional. Um, if you didn't retain a rater, it's $1,500 for final certification, 10% off code that is given to our members for that. Did you retain a rater? Great. Then it's only $250 for final certification and 10% off um, for any kind of member discount. Don't forget though, um, there are other fees that the raters are going to charge you. We don't dictate or manage those fees at all, so we can't say what they are. Um, and, um, but you know, you, you'll probably find that they're more than worth their t value with the time the raters take from you doing the documentation and of course doing all the energy inspections um, and testing while they're in the building. So. Um, I'm going to rapidly go through this. This project just certified today, really cool home renovation in Chicagoland area. Uh, we did a whole Facebook Live video tour of it that we're launching, a whole session on that you'll be able to see soon. So you'll be able to get in, meet the homeowner, the architect, the builder, um, and we're going to be launching that here soon. They just certified to the gold standard uh, renovation edition today. Um, Burns Valley, an older home that used um, sort of a back certification process. It used a lot of Green Star passive solar design right in Winona, Minnesota. And then finally, you know, we went through and documented it all um, and, and got it up to Green Star Gold and also found that, um, you know, we actually did a tour of this one too that we'll be launching soon. Um, this is Habitat for Humanity, um, Kalamazoo Valley chapter. So this program works great for habitats. Uh, it's also, um, uh, it's a silver level certified new construction. Um, that's also through the DOE's Zero Energy Ready program. And um, they may pick up a Governor's Energy Award here in Michigan um, in the next day or so. Pretty cool stuff. Um, and this is a home that, uh, very exciting. This is one of our first homes um, to obtain the uh, Zero Energy Capable Badge. Um, it also went for LEED Platinum as well. But this um, is a home that's completely uh, zero energy, not off the grid, but powers 100% of everything. Um, with electricity and, and solar, um, no gas at all. So pretty cool project. Um, this is Michigan's first Green Star new home. Uh, this is a zero energy renovation um, that was done quite a long time ago that got our Zero Energy Hero Award and gold certification. Um, really old home in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And anyway, all of our projects that we do, we love to get the word out about what you've accomplished. So we want to see you up here on this list um, and we're just going to celebrate what your success is. We may even want to do a Facebook Live tour of what you've accomplished. So, um, you know, we'll get your project uh, 
get your project up there. So I um, apologize for the little technical glitch. It took us over a little bit, but I really want to thank you. Here's my contact information. Um, here is, again, the website link. Um, I'm also putting in a comment here for those of you listening live um, that this is the 50% uh, off your preliminary um, construction plan uh, review coupon code that you can use. So I just put that into the chat box or you can email me if you didn't get it because um, we really want to help you out on your, on your first time around. So um, I've got time for questions. If you all want to stick around, I see some questions um, piling in, but I do got some time for questions. And before I get to those questions, I want to thank all of our sponsors, our members, um, our board of directors, our volunteers, and all of you for listening in. We couldn't do this without your support. Um, check your email or spam for details on how to get your CEUs. Take the survey, report your GBCI, we'll report AIA. And for those of you watching on demand, uh, make sure to take your 10 question quiz and get the 80% passing rate to get your CEU. So, um, so yeah, somebody was saying uh, Command F works great on a Mac for searching. So uh, there you go, there you have it, Command F. Um, uh, selected measures overview also shows. So yeah, um, so when you go to um, select your 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 measures overview, um, the notes that you've put in to the notes section um, should also populate for you. Um, so that way, again, if you need to print out your specific manual um, to your project, um, you know you can uh, you can uh, make sure that those notes uh, get sent out. Um, and then another question we have here is, how does the HERS index uh, measure work? Um, so yeah, so there is, um, there is a, a way to just enter your points directly in. Um, we were just scrambling behind the scenes here as of today, um, making sure that uh, version two was launched. And so we just need to make sure we've got the right uh, selection tool in there. Um, but what you'll do um, for the HERS index or ASHRAE ratings, is you'll, uh, or the kilowatt um, energy ratings, is you'll go in and you'll look at the manual or the um, question prompt and you'll look and see what, um, what uh, uh, you know, what point uh, association is with what HERS rating and then you'll just enter that in yourself. Um, and so, you know, we'll check your HERS index rating and if it's wrong, we'll obviously change it. So um, just make sure you're entering in the right one. Uh, you're probably looking at it right now, those of you listening to the live version here and saying, I can't enter it in. So yeah, we're gonna get that um, corrected here, um, you know, very briefly. Um, and can a project get points for more than one measure in section four, uh, section, um, 1.4 that is, so I'm going to pull that open. Hmm. So section 1.4, um, oh, that's a great question. So section 1.4, and let me um, share my screen so <clears throat> you can all see what I'm talking about. Um, you know, there could be, um, so that's energy use reduction. And this is, again, this is really where this is the meat and bones of the program where you're going to get a lot of your points. Um, so you really want to focus and be working with your energy raters here. Um, but there is no double dipping allowed here. And so the only place you can double dip um, is going to be the home is certified to an energy efficiency standard. So let's say you got a HERS rating, uh, yep, or a home energy score, baseline energy rating. And then in that case, if let's say you got a home energy score and then you got a home energy score of eight, then boom, you know, you can pick up, you know, one point for having it validated and then 150 for your score. Um, but you can't go and say, oh, you know, I want to get all the energy points, so I'm going to get a home energy score of eight, and then I'm going to get a HERS index rating, and oh, by the way, it reduced my um, annual energy usage. Um, and so, no, that doesn't work that way. Um, you can't just get a bunch of energy points. You have to pick your pathway. Um, and then you you um, you know you get to use this, and in fact, we might even move this out of there um, to the design section because um, it is more of a design standard than anything else. Um, so you just you only get to pick um, you know one of these, and the air changes per hour um, is actually getting removed from there. So 
you won't um, you won't see that there either. All right, so uh, we went over a lot. Are there any other questions? Um, I've got another second here. Otherwise, I really just encourage people to um, dive into the tool, start going through it, um, you know, start putting your questions into the notes section, and then send us an email and let us know, uh, you know, let us know what, um, you know, what we can do to help and, and where your specific questions are. Um, the tool is always a work in project progress. It's building science. Um, so another thing we're offering is that um, some discount coupon codes for those of you who might be able to identify, um, you know, better ways to explain credits or resource links uh, or even new credits. We really want to, um, you know, we want to take your feedback. Don't feel like you're um, offending us if you tell us something doesn't look right or isn't working right. Um, you know, we, we want to make this work for everybody, uh, make for the people who want to use it. So, um, so please just let us know and, and we would just like to make constant improvements, um, you know, rather than saying, well, something doesn't work too bad, you know, we'll get to it, you know, in three years when there's some kind of change. We want to, we want to make everything make work and make sense. And so um, we are willing to give out some, some different uh, coupon codes, um, depending on how much of a change um, to help you, um, you know, with your next project. So, well, I, I don't see any other questions. So uh, thanks again, everybody, for your time. Uh, sorry again for the uh, um, for the session cutting off there, um, but uh, let's uh, uh, catch up soon. Thank you. Take care. Have a good week.